the chickens can tell it's time to come out in the morning. You can hear the door going up now. This is just a standard chicken hutch. A cheap one that we bought from eBay. You can see that as the door goes up, it goes up very slowly. That's because we've used a 7 RPM motor, which means it has strong gearing and can lift a very heavy door. Much, much heavier than this door is. You can see the chickens are not afraid to use it at all. They're quite comfortable and happy using the door. And each morning they come out and forage around. And then of course each night they go back in. And then after they've gone in, when it's a little darker, the door closes. We'll let you see this and then we'll show you how we've made it. And there you have it. Once the timer decides to bring the door up, the timer controls the relays. The relays in this case are sealed 12 volt relays. We've mounted these on the side of the timer switch. The timer switch is mounted onto a DIN rail and controls the motor winder assembly over here. The door will raise and the door will continue to raise within this sail track guide rail until the magnetic half here reaches the wired half here. The switching noise you can hear is again the relays on the side. There's one relay for making the door go up and then there's another relay for making the door go down on the other side. The door's set to only go up for a moment and then down for a moment just for display purposes. So you can see the door lowering and it's being guided along its track which is a piece of sail track, aluminium sail track available from any hardware store. So here you can see the door being lowered, the motor controlled by the timer, the relay switches allowing the motor to work and the door continues to go down. Guided in its rails or sail track until the limit switches are reached and then it automatically shuts off. Okay, so here you can see the motor winding the pulley, the pulley winding up the cord, and as a result, bringing the door up. Okay guys, so here's the finished product. As we go up to the top, we can see the motor assembly here. It's all fixed, secured and wired in. It's powered by our timer and relay unit. The relays we've used on this occasion are the larger version because they're DIN rail mounted to prevent the soldering. I'll take one of these relays off. You can see they, they literally just clip in and out. The relays are mounted on the DIN rail along with the timer. Here's our sail track which we've used as the guide rail. You can see the DIN mount uh, rail behind here and the wiring which goes via these micro switches. One for the top as a limit switch and then down here we have another one for the bottom as another limit switch. Both activated by this little piece of uh, aluminium angle which is just stuck onto the door. And there we go. The door raises up and down within those guide rails until it gets to the top and if for some reason anything fails and it goes higher than it should, the door will reach the bottom of this uh, fail safe switch which cuts all power and thus as a result the motor assembly won't burn out. Okay, now as you can see this system looks a lot larger on the inside of the door because the relay switches we've used are the DIN rail mounted relay switches but of course when the chicken hutch door is closed you can't see any of this and none of this is bothered by the chooks whatsoever. So it looks very neat and tidy. I'll close the door and we'll give you a look at uh, what it looks like from the outside. Here we go. We we'll just get those little chookies to hop back inside. So as you can see it looks very neat and tidy from the outside. And there we go.
This is one of our chicken hutches that we're going to fit an automatic door to. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is basically just to take the chicken hutch door off. So we'll open the door. Door right up here. We'll just take it off here at the hinges. Okay, so once we've measured up the lengths of aluminium, uh, or you may choose to use timber, we've used aluminium because we had some lying around. Once you've measured up the lengths of aluminium, uh, it's easy just to fix them to the frame of the door that you'll be using. Uh, in this case, it's important if you've got wire on the door already to make sure that you take that wire out. It just makes it easier uh, to do later on, uh, to do this now rather than later on. Obviously, uh, we don't need wire in the area where the door's going to go. I've just fixed the, um, the aluminium to the frame using some pan head screws, as you can see here. You could do this any way you like. The piece of aluminium at strip at the bottom doesn't need to be anything substantial. Whereas a piece of aluminium at the top needs to be a little more substantial in size as this is what's going to carry all of our electrical components and our motor and winder. It's fixed at the top, the bottom one's fixed at the bottom and the one in the middle is just resting across the frame at the moment and that'll be held in place once we put the guide rails on to carry the door. Okay, so once we've laid out the three aluminium strips or timber or whatever you choose to use, then we place the guide rails on the side. We need to make sure that these guide rails are parallel to each other so that the door doesn't jam or become too loose on the way up. And then we simply need to screw these in. Again, I've used pan head screws just to secure these guide rails into their correct location. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to uh, get our DIN rail and I've just drilled a couple of holes and I'm going to pop rivet this onto the side here. So we'll put our pop rivet through, connect our pop rivet gun. Okay, so the last pop rivet going in now. And there we go, fastened nice and strong. Okay, so now that we've got our DIN rail mounted on here, uh, all we have to do is connect these relays, which is fairly straightforward. Place them over the top, pull the pin, and they connect on there rather nicely. Then we place the timer unit on, connecting it in the same way. And then the next relay switch sits over the top, and we connect that in the same way. Push them together, make them nice and snug. We can program the timer. Close the timer. When the relays are operating, we'll be able to see the light come on here and here. If you happen to have a relay that has a light in there, the light's really quite irrelevant. Just makes you feel nice if you're looking at it and you want to know whether it's active or not. You can certainly see the light come on, but of course you should be seeing the motor winding as well. And then we simply connect our wires to our motor and our fail safe switch, as well as our limit switches on the side. Okay, so before we put on the motor assembly and before we sit in the limit switches, uh, we've got to put our door in. The door literally fits into this sail track, like so, and then into the other end of the sail track and slides up. We can now place a hole in the centre of the door, attach it to the cord, and then this can go up to the motor assembly and we can put our limit switches roughly where we need them to be and so that we can organise it so that when the door reaches one limit switch we know that it's down, when it reaches another limit switch up the top we know that it's reached the top. Okay so once we've got the electrical components uh, added onto the frame we need to get our motor assembly organised. Now the motor that we've chosen to use is a DC 12 volt 7 RPM motor. These are easily obtained on eBay. Now, they've got quite strong gearing which means at 7 RPM the door is not going to raise up too fast or too slow, but it's certainly going to be very strong. We then need to attach that motor to a bracket. This is the bracket that we had made up at the local hardware store. Uh, you can use a gutter retaining bracket from Bunnings, which is about 95 cents. But it was easy for us to get these made up, so we had these made up. And we'll just mount them on here, and then we'll attach the motor onto here. You'll notice on the underside of this motor, if you choose to use this one, there's actually a, um, if I can get this to focus here, you'll see there's a brass ring on there. You need to drill a hole 
into your bracket large enough to take the shaft of the motor including that little brass ring. That allows the motor to sit flush onto your bracket. Okay so we've drilled the first hole and when we place that over the motor the little brass piece should come through and this sits flush on the motor's surface. Okay so once we have the motor seated into the bracket and the assembly and we know that that's sitting where we want it to be the next thing we need to do is simply to mark the holes for the uh, the corresponding screws or pop rivets so that we can make sure we put the motor in the right spot so we'll mark these two holes and then we can simply remove the motor drill a hole in each of the two spots and then we should be able to fix this motor into the right spot Okay, so as you see we've uh, attached the motor to the bracket and we've done so just using a couple of pop rivets. You might notice that the motor's shaft which comes through on the inside of the bracket, it actually has a flat side to it and that's important. You see when we attach our pulley wheel, our pulley wheel is going to slide onto that shaft and as it does so the pulley wheel actually needs to have a little grub screw on the inside of it. Hopefully you can see that there and that little grub screw if it'll just focus on there for you that's going to help to make sure that the pulley wheel stays in the right place on the motor and that it doesn't just spin freely. Therefore it'll get its strength and be able to wind up the door for you. So you'll need to remember that when you organize your pulley wheel to go on here it does need to have a grub screw to uh, attach itself to the flat side of that shaft. And we'll tighten that up just using a, uh, a simple allen key and as soon as we've done that it's ready to mount and attach the string to. Okay, the next thing to do is just to measure the width of the door so that you can determine where the center is and once you've determined where the center is then you can mark that out with a pen and place your motor assembly just in the center uh, at the top of the door frame. Once you've marked out where the motor assembly is going to go it's simply a case of lay it down on there and uh, just use your texter to mark a couple of holes for you to drill and of course then uh, secure these however you want to. Okay so as you can see we've now managed to uh, attach our motor assembly to the frame of our chicken hutch door uh, just using these type of pop rivets. You could use any type of pop rivets or tech screws or nuts or bolts anything you want to just to make sure that uh, you get that bracket assembly attached and ready to operate on the door. Okay so the next thing to do is simply to measure the width of our door once we've got the width of our door, all we need to do then is to basically find the halfway mark and make sure we mark that on our door so that we know where to drill our hole ready to attach the string for lifting up the door. So We need to make sure that we have a hole drilled in the pulley here and the easiest way to attach it to the string place the string through the hole, push it down and then drag that through. Okay, so now that we've mounted the motor assembly and attached the string to the door, the next thing we need to do is to take the wiring from our timing unit and attach that wiring to the motor. And you can see they're ready to go here. You can see each set of wiring has both a positive and a negative. Uh, and this is because the timer and the relay switches are going to determine which way the motor is going to spin. So we'll simply attach these to here and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so once we've got our motor assembly and our timing and relay unit attached to the top of the frame, we then need to put a safety switch and a limit switch on. For the moment, we've already attached the safety switch. Uh, you can see that just here. We've just stuck that on with double-sided tape for the moment. And we'll wire that up in a moment, supplying positive power over to the relays and timing unit. We also need to put some limit switches on the frame. And the limit switches need to go down here to be able to help the door to know when it's reached its limit at the bottom or when it's reached its limit at the top. In this case you can see that as the door comes down we get the clicking noise as this particular piece here which we've for the moment just stuck on with double-sided tape 
activates the limit switch which it engages as it comes down. In order to mount the micro switches we've needed to make a little platform for them to rest on and uh, certainly we felt the best platform to match the rails was another section of the rails themselves. As you can see this is just a short segment inverted or flipped around the other way and secured again just with some pan head screws and you can see the micro switch is only attached with double sided tape for the moment. The reason for the double sided tape on these is that it's really easy to be able to find the spot that you want and to place this on here like so and to mount that there and to check first of all if that's at the right level and if it is at the right level as the unit comes up then as it comes up and we decide it's at the right level we can screw that in. If not of course we can change whereabouts that sits on the rail. After we've done that the next thing to do is to secure it and then to put the micro switch on. And we'll put one down the bottom here as well and then it'll be nice and secure. Okay, so hopefully you can see the micro switch at the top. And then when it lowers down, it lets go and we go all the way down to the bottom until we reach the micro switch at the bottom, which again, it engages as it comes down. And then again, in the morning, the door comes up. We go all the way up towards the top micro switch and engage up there once again. And then at night, we come all the way down the bottom and we simply engage here. So all we need to do now is to make sure that we attach the wiring to the micro switch at the bottom here. And then make sure we attach the wiring to the micro switch at the top here. And then of course connect all of these up onto the bases of the relay with the positive power being supplied via the fail safe switch at the other side. This being designed so that if the door somehow malfunctions and becomes too high, this particular unit will stop all power via the positive lead and prevent this motor from getting too uh, wound up and as a result burning out. All right, I hope this has been helpful. You now uh, have the tools to be able to make a relocatable automatic opening and closing chicken hutch door, which of course, because of the guide rails and the three pieces of aluminium, you can transfer through to any other door. I hope you find the electrical diagram easy to follow and hope all goes well for you in making this project. Thanks, this is David for the Chook Page.